Hello friends, let us study about the complete transaction of spinal cord. If we come to the transaction of spinal cord, transaction of the spinal cord can be divided upon three types. Depending on what is the extent of lesion, it can be complete transaction, it could be incomplete transaction or it could be the hemisection. Coming here is the complete transaction. What could be the common cause for complete transaction? There are a few common causes like gunshots, dislocation of spine, occlusion of blood vessels. And the most common site for complete transaction is my mid-thoracic level. Coming to the clinical stages of complete transaction, the, we have three clinical stages depending on the time. Immediately, you know, just after the lesion, there could be a stage of spinal shock. Then there is a stage of reflex activity followed by the stage of reflex failure. Now, the duration of spinal shock, you know, it may be different in different, uh, different species, I can say. And probably this is because of a phenomena called as encephalization. Encephalization, what does this mean? Encephalization means the dependency, greater dependency of spinal cord on the higher centers. So if we see of the animals in the lower down our uh, set of evolution, maybe in the frogs, the stage of spinal shock probably lasts for a few minutes. Whereas in Cats and dogs, it may be there for a few hours. For monkeys, it may be, you know, for a few days. But in humans, this stage is for around three weeks. We are going to go to each of the stages and try to learn it. Now, what are the characteristics of uh, spinal cord lesion? We are going to go one by one. First, we'll see as what will happen to the motor function. There will be paraplegia quadriplegia depending on where the uh, lesion is okay as we have already seen if the lesion is at the cervical level if the lesion is above the t level if this is thoracic or below and this is at the cervical region next it is also called as placid paralysis so in the initial stage of the spinal shock just after the injury in humans for the first three weeks, we may find a flaccid paralysis. This is the major feature. Flaccid paralysis is because there is marked decrease in the muscle tone. Now the question is how there is a decrease in the muscle tone? Why? Because we know that if, if this is my gamma motor neuron, okay, and this is my alpha motor neuron. They not only have the spinal influence, they also have the influence from the supraspinal centers. So when there is a spinal shock, stage of spinal shock, very necessarily there may be that there is loss of these inhibitory fibers or you can say excitatory inhibitory fibers. So there will be loss of, uh, you can say, you know, uh, the supraspinal commands, as we know, they may be either facilitatory or inhibitory. But at the time of spinal shock, at that time, there is loss of what you call as the tone, you know, the facilitatory tone you, uh, for the gamma motor neurons. And so there will be hypotonia. The tone is reduced and there is hypotonia leading to flaccid paralysis. How about the areflexia? There is areflexia means the reflexes are absent. So there may be loss of the superficial and the deep tendon reflexes. Then what about the sensory effect? All the sensory effects will be lost. All sensations, all type of sensations below the lesion, they are going to be lost. And if there is a complete section above the T1, there will be elimination of sympathetic flow. Why did I say that? Because at the thoracic level, if this is my thoracic level, 
we know that that there is a lateral horn cell from where we have the afferent fibers coming as the preganglionic fibers of the sympathetic nerves and what is the function of my sympathetic nerve it has got multiple roles and different uh, organs on the heart we know it has positive ionotropic effect positive chronotropic effect positive bathmotropic effect so in total it has a stimulatory effect on the heart rate where it is going to increase the heart rate it has stimulatory effect on the force of contraction so it is going to cause an increased force of contraction increased force of contraction is going to increase the stroke volume which is going to increase the cardiac output hence there will be increase in blood pressure this is how the sympathetic has a role on to the blood vessels it has got the constrictor effect right constrictor effect it's a constrictor effect it causes the constriction of the blood vessels and so it increases the peripheral resistance now if there is a lesion at the thoracic level if there is a lesion here what am i going to lose i am going to have the motor loss there will be motor loss right we have seen that there is flaccid paralysis and another thing is that there will be loss of the sympathetic nerves our lateral horn cells are also going to get damaged so there will be damage to the preganglionic fibers of the sympathetic innervations right so sympathetic innervation has a thoraco lumbar outflow if there is a lesion in the thorax or in the lumbar what will i know that there will be damage to the sympathetic fiber so there will be some effect if the lesion is the below t6 and lumbar cord and there will be some there will effect be preservation of blood the adrenal innervations but the hmm. lower extremities may get denervated what is the visceral effect urinary bladder is paralyzed so there will be what is there urinary bladder is paralyzed the sphincter may be slightly working so there may be more likely that there is retention of the urine rectum is paralyzed leading to constipation so these are the different effects of the motor the sensory and the visceral reflexes